We're talking about celibacy today, next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Our mug of the month, poster of the month, t-shirt of the month with great coffee right here. We are metal, we are family.com. And don't forget folks, that all the proceeds go to helping the homeless. Someone left a comment and said, are you trying to sell coffee or sell, or, or selling, you know, the word? And I thought, that's an interesting comment, but I know you get tired of hearing it. I love the opportunity to serve our homeless folks. All of this goes to help them. And thank you for being part of it. I have a big announcement to make tomorrow. Mm hmm Okay. Dear Pastor Bob, I was wondering if you had to think deeply about choosing the life you live to be celibate. I know Jesus is giving me a choice, and I don't take it lightly. Did you take your time to make the choice that you've made? I'm well aware not a lot of people are celibate. So why choose me? Well, I'll tell you, that would have been my question at the very beginning too. And I didn't understand celibacy. I thought it was something that, that just Catholic priests did. I didn't know a whole lot about it. And I was actually engaged a few times, a few times before I realized that I was celibate. I really wanted to be married. I wanted to have a big family. And uh, and I love that part of it all these years later. I didn't understand at the beginning, but I have the biggest family. Thank you for being my family. But I am so blessed to be the father of a movement. And, um, and I don't say that with pride. I say that with a lot of responsibility, very soberly, but with a heart that dearly loves you and thank you for being family. But I understand the confusion with being called to be celibate. I really do understand. It's a very special calling. It's not one that a lot of people have. People say, well, you have to have a calling to be married. No, you have to have a special calling to be celibate. God tells people to be married. So I understand it more now. I didn't understand it very well at the beginning. Uh, it wasn't the choice that I really wanted to make. Um, I understood that God was leading me in that direction and I have remained celibate um, all of these years now. Uh, celibate, sexually pure, all of that, all of these years. And it's been worth it. Uh, I know now looking back at everything that I could not have been married and gone through this. You know, the the Christian rock and roll, Christian heavy metal that I've been involved with, uh, it has not been, um, should I say, gladly received by the church. Uh, and it's a whole lot better now, but at the beginning, um, I was Satan to a lot of people and uh, it was very difficult and and even times when people were threatening my life and a, a few times I had to have bodyguards and and these were mostly with Christians so uh, it has been difficult I have gone through it and I don't say that as some kind of martyr I'm not a martyr I I've read Fox's book of martyrs and I'm definitely not one of them but I realized that it would have been extremely difficult to bring a family through all of this and also all the traveling and everything else has gone with it. I'm happy for my life. I understand it a lot more, but I needed to be sure of that calling at the beginning because it is quite a choice. And for the person that wrote this question, it's a huge choice for you. Well, I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 to 35. And this is where it kind of outlines this whole thing. 
And Paul is talking. He says, my desire is to have you free from all anxiety and distressing care. Yeah, good luck with that. Because <laughs> life kind of brings that, doesn't it? He said, that's my desire. And he said, the unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly matters, how he may please his wife. And he is drawn in diverging directions. His interests are divided and he is distracted from his devotion to God. And the unmarried woman or girl is concerned and anxious about the matters of the Lord, how to be wholly separated and set apart in body and spirit. But the married woman has her cares centered in earthly affairs, how she may please her husband. Now, I say this for your own welfare and profit, he says, not to put a halter of restraint upon you, but to promote what is seemly and is good in good order and to secure your undistracted and undivided devotion to God. So he says, when you're married, you have a lot more care. You have a lot more on your plate. You really do. And I look at what so many married people go through and what fathers and mothers go through in raising children. I have huge respect for them because I know that it's not an easy task. So people say, well, you have the harder life. I don't think that's true. I think every everyone has their own cross to bear, so to speak. Everyone has the good, the bad, and the ugly in their lives. But it's a different kind of calling. So you see, it's not one to take lightly. It affects your whole life. And yesterday I did a, a, a podcast on someone that says, you know, I'm, I'm 30 and I'm not married and why can't I have a wife? Why can't I find one? You know, it's a preoccupation that so many people have. If God is giving you a husband or giving you a wife, that's awesome. I have so many Friends who are married that says, ah, I wish I wouldn't have gotten married. There's the other side of it. You have to make a choice. You have to decide what is God calling you to do. A lot of people say, I wish I hadn't gotten married because they, one, didn't marry the right person. Two, they're not doing a very good job of marriage. Some people really suck at it. Yeah. And three, perhaps they missed a calling to be celibate. But it's what you have to decide. And I can't go into a whole lot more detail for you, how God would call you, how he would lead you in this direction. I don't know, it's a heart thing. And uh, with prayer and fasting and scripture reading and all of that, you have to decide what God is leading you to do personally. And don't forget, folks, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.